So, maybe at this point, it might be good to go in and take a look at placing some actual annotatable elements inside of a microstation model. So we just saw how the current annotation scale had the ability to influence the items that were placed here already. Now let's take a look at placing a few simple annotatable elements in a design. To start with, I thought we might come in here and just place a room label similar to what we see in the adjacent rooms that we have here on the plan. If we go to the Annotate Ribbon tab and then select the Place Text tool, the first step is to always come in and adjust the tool settings. Our method is set to by origin. And here is where we can see the annotation lock icon and that it is enabled. Take note of how when I hover over the icon, it displays the annotation scale factor of one to 100. Now, we're going to come over to the text editor. It is here where we can select the text style from the drop-down menu. Style none is simply the active text settings. For our task, we want to select the text style T 2.5 millimeters. So now I just want to quickly open the text styles dialog. Here we can see a list of available text styles. Now this text style is set for 2.5 master units tall, which the master units in this model are currently set for millimeters. That's going to go ahead and multiply the 2.5 by the 100 scale factor to give me the actual size of the text. So now I would like to cover some of the settings that compromise a text style. When you select a text style, its given properties are displayed over on the right hand side. This is made up of five different tabs, starting with the general tab. Here you can come in and select from one of the available fonts. At the top of this listing, you'll find all of the microstation fonts. Notice the microstation icon to the left. As you scroll down through this, you'll reach the true type fonts. The true type fonts are a good font to go with because they are the middle ground between the two applications, those being MicroStation and the other being AutoCAD. And speaking of AutoCAD, if we scroll down to the bottom of this listing, here is where you run into the AutoCAD fonts. Again, notice the icon that we have over on the left. This is the icon for AutoCAD. Other things that you can do in here is set the justification. Justification will be the origin or insertion point of your text. If you plan to use annotation scale, it's a good idea to use the middle center as a justification because all the text will be scaled relative to your justification point. Here's where you can determine the height, the width, and so on. Other properties like color, bold, and italics are an option here. The next tab is the spacing tab. So this controls the spacing for each line of text and multi-line text. It also controls the spacing between each character. The next tab is the under and overline settings. Here you can enable underline and overline. You can adjust how much this will offset from your text. These are based off a percentage of the overall text height. And then you can determine the symbology of that underline or overline from the settings here below. The next tab is the background. So here you can enable the background feature. This is made up of a fill color and also of a background border, which you can determine the settings. A common situation would be for someone to enable background, which would be like a mask to cover up any geometry that would be under your text. If that was the case, you would set the color here to background. And then you would do that as well for the background border. The last tab is the advanced tab. This combines all the settings from the previous four tabs with the addition of several more options. And here you can use the edit mode. So anything that's black and bold, you can make changes to here. When you select multiple text styles, then you have the option to work with the comparison or differences mode. With the comparison mode, you see a side-by-side -side comparison of all the settings between the two selected styles. If you set this to the differences mode, then only the differences between the selected text styles will be displayed. Here, we're going to simply come in and type 
in the label. Maybe this is, in fact, the conference room. So this becomes very important that you know that there's a possibility that you might change that active annotation scale factor to make sure that the justification of that text is set to the most appropriate to correspond with that. Here, in this case, it's set to middle center, so it will justify about the center point for that label. I'm going to go ahead and place that in the file. And just to show you that we can, it is also possible to place one without that annotation scale lock. If I disable the display of the annotation scale influence on that piece of text, you'll maybe look at my cursor and think that there's nothing on the cursor right now. But yet, if we zoom in, zoom in, and zoom in, eventually we'll get to the point where we can see the current piece of text on my cursor. It's being displayed now without the multiplier of 1 to 100. So that means it's the actual 2.5 millimeters tall. Now, I could come in here and do the math myself. I could do the multiplier manually if I want to do. Then it doesn't have the ability to automatically update through the use of the annotation scale. Anyway, up to you. You can still do it the more conventional way, potentially, if you wanted to but you don't have the ability to automatically do the scaling. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.